Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, neural networks and basically as title says it's a gentle introduction to neural networks so we don't we, we, our goal for today is to um, kind of make an intuition of what it is what it's not uh, how it works under the bonnet and what uh, programmatical tools what software can we use in order to create a neural network to to train the neural network what actually it means uh, to train the neural the the, the network um uh, because we have limited amount of time and the the world world of uh, neural networks it's massively huge i decided to split the uh, this talk into um, series i would say and today we're going to have a gentle introduction to neural networks we're going to cover some basic very basics of basics of the neural networks and uh, we will proceed uh, in the next talk with uh, more um, sophisticated more advanced stuff related uh, to neural networks like uh, convolutional neural, neural networks and we will understand how they can uh, help us to uh, classify images for instance to recognize some particular patterns on the given image and so on and so forth um, so let's uh, let's get started and let me share my screen I wanna um, okay so let me I share the slides. Okay, so um, our plan for today is uh, looks as follows. So we're gonna uh, understand what it's. Uh, first of all, we're gonna understand what a neural network is. We will dive into the anatomy of the neural network. Then we will uh, try to think about some. Um, some uh, training, um, I mean, approaches uh, uh, on training neural networks, and I will explain what it actually means. And then we will uh, see some uh, some um, uh, examples. Uh, I have prepared a few uh, examples, and we will see how it works. Uh, uh, you know, in terms of code. Uh, I must admit that I'm not very good in uh, preparing some some fancy presentations, so I <clears throat> decided to go with Keith's approach, and um, my slides are very uh, various very um, poor, I would say, uh, but I do like writing. So be prepared. I will be using uh, whiteboards today as well. So. Um, uh, what it actually, what neural network is actually, uh, people who are not familiarized with uh, um, machine learning can deep learning uh, what they see, what they think about, uh, what what actually appears in their brain when when uh, when they saw or hear uh, term neural network. It's actually a human brain uh, cell. So, uh, in a nutshell, uh, neural networks uh, that we use uh, to uh, to classify stuff and to to train uh, to to use in machine learning, uh, it's very similar to what actually uh, is going on on the in the human brain. So, if we uh, take a look at the human brain cell, we're gonna see that it uh, consists of certain parts like soma axons, dendrites, uh, neurotransmitters, and so on and so forth. Uh, what we need to uh, take into account here is that uh, the one, uh, one um, neural uh, set, uh, cell, one brain cell, uh, is capable to um, uh, produce a signal uh, and send this uh, signal to other uh, cells. Moreover, uh, this cell, um, this signal uh, can be um, amplified, so we could, uh, you know, um, increase or decrease the magnitude of this uh, of the signal. Uh, and uh, neural uh, one neural neural set, uh, sorry, not uh, one neural cell, one brain cell, is capable to. Um, uh, perform very very basic task it can um, as we can see later it can do very very simple trivial things and then communicate with other cells so one cell itself doesn't give us any almost anything it it, it gives us anything uh, however if we uh, combine the cells into the group and uh, allow them to communicate with uh, each other they could um, give us um, a value they will bring us a value. Uh, so um, 
uh, stepping forward, uh, we will need to introduce something. Uh, so we are not uh, neural uh, neural scientists. We are not uh, people who uh, who uh, do biology. Uh, we are uh, engineers, and so we would need to introduce some formalism in order to uh, understand what it uh, what neural network is in our um, I would say nomenclature. So um, as a matter of fact, uh, a neural network a neural network is a network uh, which consists of uh, certain um, neurons neurons and what you can see uh, at this on the screen uh, right now it's a model mathematical model of a single neuron so what we uh, see here so each neuron uh, has inputs uh, in this case we have only three inputs uh, on these inputs we can send particular signals to this neur uh, to, to this uh, neuron uh, and what it does uh, it takes the uh, this signal for instance x1 x2 or x3 obviously the amount of signals could be much much uh, uh, bigger uh, but what uh, neuron does uh, is uh, he, um, he actually either amplifies or um, uh, or gain the the, the signal. Uh, it um, it has been performed with these uh, so-called weights. So in other words, we would need to uh, multiply the incoming signal uh, to a particular weight and then sum them. So what it actually does us uh, what it what, what it actually gives us uh, so uh, by uh, signals these signals we can interpret as particular features for instance uh, we could uh, try to you know classify let let us assume the following example uh, we have a set of um, pictures on these pictures we have uh, teenagers teenagers boys and girls yeah and so we can uh, define some particular features which distinct one group of, from another for instance girls uh, they often uh, have long hair they use cosmetics uh, on, the, on the other hand uh, boys then uh, they for instance uh, in most cases, they have short, uh, short hair, a short haircut. They, for instance, might, might have scars on their face, for instance, or they um, sometimes they do use cosmetics, by the way, sometimes not. But in any case, we could find these features as a kind of uh, signals and uh, using these signals we could uh, try to distinct uh, one group from uh, another so th th uh, this is exactly what uh, does the uh, neuron one one particular neuron it uh, takes the feature uh, which is uh, I, I described here as a signal it tries to uh, amplify uh, or increase or decrease it depending on the importance uh, of, of, uh, of uh, this particular signal for instance if uh, one one particular feature is very important in order to, uh, you know, classify a particular uh, example. Uh, this feature will be, uh, you know, the importance of this feature will be increased, uh, which means that this particular white will be uh, increased. Uh, on the other hand, if a particular uh, a particular feature is uh, less uh, important, uh, it will be decreased. So, which means that a particular white will be uh, will be lower with respect to to, to others. In other words, uh, a single neuron, it's a so-called weighted sum of uh, incoming inputs. So these uh, inputs, we're going to uh, multiply by their weights and uh, sum. There is also, uh, uh, we can observe here uh, something called bias, which is kind of a coefficient of, a coefficient of a displacement. I will explain later what it, uh, what it actually is. But as a matter of fact, you could, um, at this very moment, you could uh, treat it as a so-called so virtual feature. So uh, this is not um, a part of the, of the vector uh, at this very moment, but it's, it's a kind of feature which, uh, which, uh, which uh, comes from the outside. 
So when we uh, have uh, summed all the, uh, when we, as soon as we calculated the weighted sum of uh, input signals, uh, we could also um, uh, perform here activation. By activation, I mean uh, we could apply to the sum uh, something called activation function. So the activation function, it uh, actually introduces some, um, uh, please note that uh, before this activation function, uh, we had some non, uh, we had a linear combination of the input signal, but after uh, applying activation function, we're gonna have here, um, something called uh, you know non 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 linearity so in other words we uh, were doing some mapping from the uh, linear combination of the input feature uh, to the to to to, to something to, to some to some space and this is this will be the output of the, uh, our uh, neuron so as simple as that this uh, actually uh, uh, kind of models uh, what uh, a real brain cell does, uh, and uh, having this thing, we're already uh, capable to uh, to do some uh, interesting uh, interesting stuff. Uh, let us uh, let us discuss before doing this. We're gonna uh, come back uh, again uh, for 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 a while to 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 a biology and compare the uh, our mathematical model to the uh, real uh, real uh, brain cell so as you can see uh, uh, real brain cell has something called axons so uh, these are uh, kind of wires and uh, using this virus we not virus but wires so this uh, this is so-called so, so maybe call, let's call it cables so with these cables we are uh, capable to uh, to connect uh, several uh, brain cells into in, into one single uh, structure, and they can communicate with each other via neurotransmitters sending signals uh, sending signals. Uh, the same situation is here. So uh, at this very moment, we have already discussed only one particular neuron, but it doesn't mean that we can't use several neurons. So we can introduce several neurons and. Uh, and connect with uh, connect them. For instance, here here uh, there uh, we can see uh, inputs uh, with uh, with signals. Uh, we can see here the weighted sum and activation function, and the output or the output of the neuron could be uh, sent to another neuron as its input. In other words, in such a way, we can, you know, combine a very sophisticated, very uh, complex uh, network. And this is actually neuron, uh, neuron, uh, neuron, neuron network. Um, the same way, uh, like if we compare it, if uh, with with the networks in our uh, brains, we could come up with a, a with an idea that uh, if we have uh, sufficiently complex network it can uh, it can uh, uh, perform really uh, fancy tasks by task i mean uh, it can solve uh, very non trivial uh, problems like uh, image image classifications for instance uh, the same way works actually brain cells if you if you take a, if you take just only one brain cell you basically have nothing but if you uh, take a lot of brain cells, uh, as many as we have uh, in our brains, we, you, you could uh, come up with an idea that your brain is capable to do very, very complex tasks, like, for instance, speaking about neural networks. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, so what? So we have introduced uh, a model of the one particular neuron and what it actually gives us. Uh, before uh, answering the, this question, I will uh, say one, uh, one th uh, thing. So uh, this is called also uh, a single layer perceptron. So perceptron, uh, it's like, uh, this is the uh, original um, name of, uh, of this structure uh, from the times the, when it was invented. Uh, perceptron, it's, uh, you know, it stands for percept. So it's per, it percepts the signals and produces the output. So this is the a single layer perceptron. It has just only one neurons, uh, three uh, inputs and one output. However, you could uh, combine these perceptrons into a network and you're gonna have uh, multiple layer perceptrons, perceptron which we'll uh, observe in a moment. 
So, but what actually uh, a single layer perceptron? What it actually gives us? What it uh, what it can uh, what what it what it does? Um, let us uh, take a look at uh, at an example. Uh, the example will be uh, as follows. Let me stop sharing my screen because I want to uh, take the uh, whiteboard and share with the whiteboard. So. Um, this is a typical classification problem, uh, and uh, I would even say this is a kind of benchmark of, of, the, of the classification problem in each uh, machine learning class. Uh, I believe they start from uh, from this. Uh, let us assume we have a Cartesian space uh, on uh, 2D plane, and um, we can treat as in the following way. Let's let us assume that we have um, uh, features x uh, two and x y and uh, and x1, and these uh, are kind of mm, some some features. I don't know. Maybe uh, it could be whatever. It could be whatever. Um, and let us assume that um, the points in uh, this Cartesian space they can be uh, treated as two uh, basic classes. For instance, the points that are grouped here on this uh, um, on this space. Uh, let's uh, call them uh, crosses and let's say that um, let's let us do the following let us uh, assume that um, points on or objects uh, which are located here on this corner they are uh, boxes so uh, what we want to do we want to uh, introduce a line a line uh, which divides the, the the plane, our Cartesian space, into two subspaces in such a way that on each uh, that that object of um, one class belong only to uh, their uh, part. In other words, so uh, crosses are on the one hand side of, uh, with respect to this line, and boxes on the they they reside on the other uh, hand side with respect to this uh, to this line. So, in other words, we would need to introduce a linear classification a classifier, a classifier. So, we would need to introduce a line or uh, uh, like. Yeah, uh, like I said, a line uh, uh, which um, which is actually, which divides these uh, two classes. Uh, so uh, this line could be introduced um, by providing uh, its coefficients. For instance, we could introduce the function uh, which depends uh, of um, uh, x one and x two, and this is uh, this will be the line with uh, coefficients. Uh, w1 uh, x1 plus let's say w2 x2 um, yeah uh, if we take the sign of this line if we take uh, let us assume that uh, crosses uh, let's label this uh, class as plus one and let's uh, label uh, boxes uh, as class minus one so uh, we could take a sign of this uh, weighted sum and treat this uh, sign this sign as uh, as a class as a class so if we introduced such w1 and w w2 uh, we will introduce a linear classifier a binary a linear classific uh, classifier which uh, can distinct crosses from um, from um, uh, from what from boxes uh, but this is exactly what uh, the uh, perceptron does. Actually, so uh, actually, uh, we could uh, assume that there is a one neuron uh, which is which does actually uh, summation, and there are two uh, inputs in this neuron. The first input it is a signal x1, and the second input is a signal x2. Uh, so here we have uh, weights. And after uh, calculation, calculation of the weighted sum, we could apply an activation function, and this activation function uh, could be a sign. So taking a sign, sign, uh, yeah, like this. And on the input, we're gonna have either plus one, uh, sorry, uh, either uh, plus one or minus one. So uh, in, in such a way, uh, having only one neuron, we are capable to uh, create a linear classifier, which is uh, which can uh, uh, build uh, a classification line, uh, which uh, distincts one uh, 
uh, one uh, object uh, object one of uh, one uh, class from uh, another. Um, uh, cool. So it's uh, it makes sense. Uh, maybe uh, we could uh, try to to do something better. Let's. Um, I mean, uh, maybe we could do some something more with with this. Um, uh, and we can actually uh, uh, we actually can do so. For instance, if we if uh, we introduce here several additional inputs, we could go from two dimensional space to n dimensional space and and um, and and build a, a, classif a classification hyperline, which distinct which again which again a distinct uh, uh, object of, of one class from uh, another. Uh, however, uh, even though it looks very fancy. Uh, uh, such um, neuron, uh, such uh, linear model has uh, limitations. And what are they? Um, the thing is that uh, our data, uh, not, uh, they are not necessarily linearly uh, separable. For instance, uh, here and in my example, uh, we could uh, see that the object of uh, one particular class, yeah, they really, you know, perf they form the kind of um, cluster uh, and uh, you're able to, you know, draw a line which actually separates one from another. But what if we had a situation like this, when the, um, the objects, uh, they uh, reside in the plane in such a way that you are not able to uh, draw a, you know, a, a strict line. Yeah? Uh, so uh, in this case, you have a problem. You have a non, uh, non linearly, linearly non-separable data, and you can go with just only one particular neuron. Uh, let me give you another example. Another example could be uh, like uh, like this. This is so-called XOR uh, problem. So uh, we could introduce, for instance, here X, here uh, box, uh, here mm, no, here box, here box, and here X, and so. You can try to draw a line, but uh, no matter how, how hard you try, uh, you can't just create a line which, uh, which separates uh, one from another. Uh, what, you can, what you could think about, you could uh, think about some surface uh, or a curve, which actually uh, introduces you a um, kind of uh, area, um, which actually covers uh, the objects of the particular uh, type or the particular class. For instance, like uh, like I draw, like uh, uh, I introduced here. In this case, you could uh, treat uh, this line in the following way: everything which resides inside this uh, this area belongs to one class, and what uh, what lays outside the uh, of this uh, line belongs to another class. Uh, this is so-called non-linear. Um, classifier and uh, basically neural networks when you uh, when you combine the neurons in a network they introduce such uh, such very complex very um, sophisticated surfaces which are capable to distinct one uh, one class uh, from another um, let's take a look at the uh, at, 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 uh, at one thing. Uh, so how to tackle uh, our uh, particular problem of non-separable class? Uh, we can do the following thing. Let me open one um, very fancy uh, tool. Uh, let me just uh, open it uh, and share my screen again. Um, hold on a second, because if I lost the link, but it's very easy to, uh, to find it. Um, mm -mm -mm. Hold on a second. So we, uh, do, 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 do. Not TensorFlow, but oh yeah, Marshall. Yeah, this is okay. So uh, I don't know. Perhaps you you might uh, have heard about this um, tool. This is very a very fancy tool uh, for which uh, which uh, allows us to 
visualize what uh, neural network does uh, and you can play around with this um, uh, sandbox in order to understand how the amount of neurons and how to uh, how amount of uh, particular layers and activation functions uh, you know uh, how, how they influence on the result so let us uh, do uh, the following uh, example. Uh, let us assume we have uh, one neuron, which with two inputs, and we have um, uh, just uh, just just linear uh, activation function, and we have um, such uh, such data set such data set. So we have here two uh, types of classes, and we can. Um, we can actually draw a line which separates them. Uh, if we run the uh, training of, of the network, you can see that after some uh, iterations, we uh, have we're going to have here a steady line which uh, which actually distincts one class uh, from another. Uh, but let us uh, introduce here some kind of non uh, non. Uh, some, some some more sophisticated data, like uh, like this. Uh, in this case, uh, so our linear actual, uh, classifier actually doesn't work. So uh, if we uh, take a look here, we're going to have here 50% uh, of uh, loss, so uh, which is actually error or misclassified data. So uh, let us think uh, what uh, we, can do, we can do here. So um, the idea here. Uh, am I sharing my? Let me share the whole screen because uh, from time to time I'm, I, I will be going to a presentation. Uh, so, um, uh, how to tackle the problem? Uh, could we add uh, more neurons? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Perhaps we could. Like, uh, let's let us try, try it out. Uh, we're gonna introduce here maybe two neurons. Will it help? So if we run uh, training again, it doesn't work. Uh, what if we introduce uh, three neurons? Again, this is doesn't help. Maybe. And by the way, so uh, these neurons, these three neurons, they uh, uh, compose so-called layer. At uh, this very moment, we have one input layer, one hidden layer. Uh, what if we introduce a second uh, hidden layer uh, with, for instance, let's say one neuron, will it help? I'm afraid in this case, uh, not really, not really. Again, we have uh, we have problem, but let us uh, think what else uh, could, we, could we do here? So uh, we uh, agreed that uh, introducing more neurons, more layers and uh, not necessarily helps if we have a particular, um, uh, if our data have particular properties like non-linearity uh, non, non in, in our example. Uh, however, uh, we could also try to use another activation function. So we deal with non-linearity, non then let's, uh, let's us uh, use non-linearity. Non so let us introduce here another activation function. Um, I'm going to uh, re uh, reduce the amount of neurons here just to change the activation function at, from linear, for instance, to sigmoid. And um, let us uh, take a look what's going on here. So at this very moment, it seems like uh, we began perform a bit better. Yeah. So uh, in this case, we uh, created a curve which actually uh, doesn't uh, ideally distinguish uh, one class from another, but it's much better than uh, it uh, it used to be. Um, here we could play around with the amount of neurons, amount of uh, layers, but uh, in general, I, from my experiments, it turned out that we could here we could use here hyper hyperbolic tangent in order to as an activation function to uh, to uh, to get a better result. Um, okay, so maybe let me uh, not not better, but let me introduce another um, layer, and it could be better. Uh, okay, maybe another neurons, more neurons. Uh, almost there. As you can see here, uh, this experiment shows that it's not, not necessary adding a new, a new neuron or a new layer uh, will help you. But for instance, here, 
uh, we introduced the second neuron and uh, it's um, it, it is much better. So we uh, introduced a very sophisticated curve, uh, which actually uh, does well. Yeah. So uh, summary, to, to summarize, uh, we could, um, by introducing uh, layers and neurons on the particular layers, we could change the complexity of the network. And by, by adding additional layers and, and neurons, we give uh, additional degrees of freedom to our neural network. And it can actually um, catch a particular dependencies between the data and uh, because of this, it can uh, you know, perform better. Uh, it doesn't mean though that the more neurons, the more layers, uh, the, the, the better. Sometimes it's uh, sometimes it adding additional degree of freedom may harm you badly uh, when you have, uh, because you, you, you could uh, get something called overfitting. But uh, we won't we want speak about overfitting today. So at this very moment, what we need to understand is that by adding additional uh, degrees of freedom to neural network, uh, we could actually, uh, you know, make it more complex and it, it, it could be uh, for neural network, it will be possible to uh, catch particular very uh, thin uh, dependencies between, between the data. And also by changing the activation function, we could actually tune a bit the performance of the neural network. Uh, okay, so let's move forward. So uh, what we have introduced uh, a minute ago uh, is called multi-layer perceptron, which is actually the combination of the single uh, layer perceptrons uh, as a matter of fact. So we, we have uh, several neurons uh, combined together. Uh, some inputs goes to, uh, uh, some outputs uh, goes to another uh, neuron neurons inputs and so we have the the network uh, so um, in general we could uh, define a, a several um, terms here we have some, something called input layer and uh, in most cases it it means that here we have our input signals uh, we also have the hidden layers uh, we could have multiple hidden layers and they've uh, they have they may have a lot of neurons and they, we also have uh, something called uh, output layer. And this output layer, it's actually our result, uh, the result of the performance of our network. Uh, and um, uh, please do uh, bear in mind that um, uh, in this particular case, in this particular example, we have only one uh, output um, uh, on our output layer, but it doesn't mean that the uh, output should be single. Uh, sometimes uh, the output uh, consists of uh, several neurons, which, you, which we could uh, treat as, um, as uh, output. Uh, okay. Uh, also, we would need to uh, understand uh, this um, uh, Ws. Uh, these Ws are very important. Uh, they are uh, uh, coefficients which actually either simplify or desimplify, I would say, uh, our signal. So uh, the, the value of this uh, weight is uh, very, very important. And to train our network is actually mean, uh, is a, it actually means to uh, adjust uh, these uh, weights. So uh, by training network, you actually change in these weights in, in, in such a way that it's, uh, you know, the, uh, the network begins uh, to uh, perform better and to give you uh, better results. And uh, finally, we're going to discuss what, it's, what, what this bias actually means. Uh, bias is a uh, um, ki kind of displacement. Uh, in most cases, I... Um, explained it in such a way. For instance, we're going to have, let's, let's, uh, let us assume we have a, um, a linear uh, equality. So we have a line uh, kx plus b. So obviously, uh, this is uh, by changing k and b, we could introduce several uh, different lines. Yeah, but let us uh, assume that we uh, just removed from our equation the term uh, b. In this case, we still have infinitely many uh, number of lines, but all of them will be uh, centered here. Uh, sorry, uh, here. Uh, so this coefficient uh, b it actually uh, you know stares the 
uh, yeah, it's it controls the the displacements of the uh, of the line. In this case, we could you know, for instance, if you have uh, data here and you want to build a, a linear regressor uh, and you want to to let me uh, tr uh, try to draw the better result, uh, the the better. Um, uh, picture. Let's say we uh, were trying to uh, solve the regression uh, problem, and we have such line, uh, so such such data. So we have a, a point cloud, and we see that there is a kind of linear tendency here. So obviously, we could uh, try to uh, draw a line which. Uh, approximates this uh, amount of uh, points. Uh, and uh, if we uh, do it in, uh, like this, obviously this uh, line repeats the linear tendency. It has almost the same tangent, almost the same uh, angle here as these da uh, data do. Uh, but um, again, this line is very far from these points. Uh, however, if we draw, if you draw this line here, or maybe even here, uh, this uh, this uh, model which will be much better because the the error which which be which will be uh, much much lower, and to move this line from the uh, from the origin to the to a particular point in the uh, x uh, axis uh, is possible only with this b, and this uh, bias actually uh, this is what bias does. So. Uh, we uh, understood that uh, neural networks have uh, layers. Uh, we uh, understood that they have inputs, outputs, they have uh, connections, and uh, each connection has its weight. And then uh, by adjusting this weight, you are able to, uh, to train or to teach the uh, neural network. Okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, we already covered the the, the weights. So uh, when it comes to weights, um, they could have uh, different values, and our uh, our goal is to 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 uh, to find these uh, weights. Um, let me uh, tell you a couple of words about activation functions. Uh, uh, we haven't covered it yet, uh, but uh, let's do it. So activation function is uh, something which uh, actually introduces the nonlinearity uh, to the uh, to the linear cl classification, yeah, to the, the to this um, uh, linear combination of the uh, input signals. Uh, it doesn't mean that the activation function has to be nonlinear. Sometimes it's uh, it's opposite. It's uh, uh, it's linear or semi-linear depends on the problem. Uh, but sometimes it's 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 really uh, it is a curve uh, as opposed to uh, to strict line. Uh, here I put uh, for the most um, the most. Um, uh, known, I would say, uh, activation functions. Uh, so these activation functions uh, could be used uh, on each layer uh, on um, of, of the neural network. It does mean that this uh, this is a full list of the uh, whole possible activation functions. If we go to the Wikipedia uh, and um, activation uh, and put a right list of uh, activation activation functions, we're gonna um, we're gonna see. Um, we're going to see a huge list of different activation functions for different purposes. Um, so which means actually that the, 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 as a matter of fact, uh, there are plenty of, uh, of activation functions and they could be used on different, uh, in, in different problems. Uh, you may ask, uh, how to what what why 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 we to use for instance tangent uh, and uh, why we don't use uh, for instance um, uh, sigmoid uh, all the time. Uh, the problem is uh, that sometimes uh, during the uh, during the training of, of the neural network, we we could observe different problems like varnishing the gradients. Uh, sometimes um, uh, it is not possible to. So, some sometimes uh, our gradients they actually decay and uh, in certain point in time we are not able uh, any longer to adjust uh, neural network weights. So uh, this is one of the problems uh, of the uh, training of the neural networks. Uh, uh, to be more specific, of the uh, training of the neural networks. 
uh, we won't discuss it now, but the, I want you to know that the, the such, such a problem exists and um, dependent on what activation function you have chosen uh, may depend the, uh, the performance of uh, training process of your neural network. Uh, you already observed it uh, in our example when we used here a sigmoid and um, we got some some strange, uh, some strange results. But uh, as soon as uh, I introduced here a hyperbolic tangent, uh, it uh, began perform much, much, much more better. Um, yeah. So uh, activation functions uh, they are used to, let's say, activate the neuron before the, before transmitting the signal uh, forward. Uh, and let's talk about the training of the net neural network. What, what it actually means to train a neural network and how, how we do it. There are plenty uh, of um, uh, approaches how to do it. Let's uh, us un uh, understand uh, the, the, the most, uh, like the, uh, the concept. Uh, in order to train the uh, network, uh, like I said, we need to uh, adjust the uh, this weight of this uh, or the particular layers. Uh, in order to do this, we would need to have a, a set of examples for our neural network. For instance, there is a data set called NIST, uh, and this data set uh, consists of uh, handwritten numbers. And um, uh, we could put the number to the input of the neural network and we know what uh, this uh, neural network should uh, print out. So in other words, if you put here such image, uh, we know that the neural network should put uh, should output four. Um, we could introduce a, uh, an error function, which is, uh, which is actually, uh, which will be doing the following. Um, the error function will um, find the difference between the expected value, which we already know from the uh, training data set, and the actual value, which actually swallowed, um, oh, sorry, not swallowed, but spit um, the neural network. So in other words, we uh, take the, uh, the example, we, uh, we know the proper answer for this example, we put it to, to our, we, we actually feed it to our neural network, it produces some result, and we compare this result to what to, to the thing that we expected. Uh, we could uh, find the difference between, uh, between uh, different uh, inputs and different outputs and uh, adjust accordingly a particular, uh, a, a particular uh, weight to minimize the, uh, the uh, total error, the total error. So in other words, we have here a classical uh, optimization problem. So we put something to the, to the input, we have something on, uh, on the output, we compare it to what we expected and uh, calculate the error. And then uh, we uh, adjust the weights of the neural network and repeat the process until it converged. converged. Uh, by convergency, I mean that we could introduce the particular precision uh, if, the, uh, if we see that uh, weights of our neural network doesn't uh, change uh, you know, uh, with respect to a particular uh, precision, then we could uh, stop uh, or we could also um, stop out, uh, stop after a particular amount of iterations. So in other words, we uh, need here to understand something called gradient descent. This is a particular, uh, this is a very um, basic and, uh, but, but still powerful uh, approach uh, of um, optimization. So, uh, by gray, uh, what's what it actually is. So let me define the problem first. So let us assume that they have a function, uh, and this function is defined on the uh, in the n space domain, uh, and uh, I want this function. Uh, I want to find in, in this area such an x uh, that is um, that uh, in this point in this x, uh, this function uh, takes the minimum uh, the the uh, the minimum a minimum value so in other words this is the minimum of uh, of this function um in our uh, coming back to our neural networks uh, our function could be the error the the error of the expected and the actual values uh, and the arguments of the functions of the of this function could be 
this uh, weight, this uh, weight of our our uh, neural network, and our um, uh, goal is to find uh, such weights. So this uh, uh, error function is the uh, has the has the minimum uh, gradient descent. It works in the following way. So we need to introduce a gradient of the of the function, uh, which is a vector of partial derivatives of the function. Yeah. So. Just to remind you uh, the fact of from calculus that uh, we have a deriv derivative uh, in case of uh, multidimensional spaces, we have uh, partial derivatives and a gradient is a vector and this vector actually gives you uh, the direction uh, in which uh, the function grows um, very fast. Uh, on the other hand, so-called anti-gradient, uh, it gives you the direction where a function decays. Uh, you know, it's the, the direction of the fastest decay of the function. Uh, and so the gradient descent method is uh, actually based on the fact that, uh, that anti-gradient is um, the direction of the fastest decay of the function. So here, uh, in order to find such x uh, x star, uh, we could introduce the following iteration uh, iterative process. Um, we're gonna uh, take a random point in our space, in, in our uh, uh, n-dimensional space, and then iterate. Uh, and then just build build the iteration process. Uh, next x uh, will be uh, will be created uh, based on the previous one, uh, previous one by uh, using this the, this formula. In this formula, uh, x uh, uh, x i it's the previous x. Um, uh, nabla f this is the value of the gradient in this point, and the uh, alpha is uh, something called uh, learning rate in uh, neural networks. There's a special coefficient which actually, um, it actually controls how fast you can converge to, to, the, uh, to the optimum value. Obviously, there, there, are, uh, there are plenty of things to discuss here. Uh, for instance, uh, what if uh, a, functions, a function of uh, f function has uh, several minimums, um, but we, we, we won't cover it uh, today, but you please bear in mind that uh, this is the most the most um i would say uh, trivial thing so when the, the when the f function is convex in this case uh, it it will it will converge uh, it will converge otherwise uh, we're going to we may have um issues here um so in other words when it comes to gradient descent all you need to know is this uh, equation. So, so uh, next x will be uh, perf will be created uh, based on the previous one and the value of the gradient uh, in the previous uh, value. Uh, if we put here instead of x uh, w's, uh, we're gonna introduce the problem uh, of the. Uh, not not problem, but uh, we will introduce the process which will uh, train our neural network. F this is uh, will be our error function, and the, the argument of the error function will be a particular weight. Uh, okay, so uh, there are uh, a lot of modifications could be introduced here, and uh, one of the uh, one of the modification is that. Uh, because neural, because real, uh, uh, I mean, um, real networks uh, might be very huge. In this case, a computation of this gradient and uh, one step of the gradient descent will uh, could be very, um, you know, uh, very cost. Um, time consuming uh, and uh, it will be very cost. Uh, in this case, we could uh, introduce something called stochastic gradient descent, which actually calculates the gradient a, in a bit different way based not, uh, it, uh, based not, only, not on uh, the entire data set, but on the subset. Um, and there are uh, many, many more uh, modifications of this, but this is the base of the, uh, of the, uh, of the training of the neural network. Um, and uh, it's good that uh, we don't need to uh, learn by heart all these methods and to understand the, uh, at least uh, we don't need very deep knowledge of the math which, uh, which, the, which lays behind this. Uh, this uh, processes because we have already, we have already plenty of 
libraries and software which uh, actually simplifies uh, our life uh, you may uh, probably heard about the tensorflow keras and pytorch these are the uh, frameworks in which you can uh, define your neural network uh, train it and actually uh, run um, you probably heard about other uh, libraries like there is a scikit learn which also, which actually not about uh, which is not entirely about the um, uh, neural networks but uh, but still it has some uh, some some modules in which you can train your neural network and there are uh, less uh, known uh, libraries like ffnet or pybrain and so on they uh, for instance pybrain it is um i tried it uh, several times when just 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 to prepare for the uh, for the classes and it's uh, i don't think that it's uh, it has been used uh, in, in in production because like uh, it's very very limited uh, as opposed to tensorflow keras or pytorch um, and uh, let us uh, take a look at the example uh, of the real, ne uh, real neural network and its training uh, based on Python, uh, not PyTorch, but TensorFlow. Uh, I prepared here uh, the uh, call up. Um, yeah, I prepared here a small uh, call up, uh, which actually. Uh, introduces the uh, neural network uh, based uh, on uh, TensorFlow and what it actually does. So uh, it actually works on uh, MNIST dataset. A MNIST dataset, like it has, it has been already mentioned here, uh, it's um, uh, I would say the learning data set uh, and this this data set consists of uh, small pictures uh, of handwritten uh, digits each picture has uh, 28 pixels per 20x pixels resolution and they are kind of you know gradations of gray so uh, what we uh, want to do we want to take um, each image uh, take into account that uh, image is a uh, matrix we could just you know uh, make uh, uh, make it one dimensional so instead of having a matrix of uh, 28 by 28 we're going to have a, a vector one uh, per uh, 600 uh, 700 uh, 84 i believe pixels in other words we can you can take the rows and put them um, you know in one line so uh, in other words, we could uh, map uh, matrices to the vectors. Uh, these vectors we will put to the input of the neural network and we're gonna expect that the neural network will uh, give us the number uh, uh, which, is, uh, which was introduced in this uh, example. So how it, how it works. Uh, first of all, uh, we would need to uh, load the MNIST data set. So uh, MNIST data set, is in the, this is an example data set which is uh, available e almost everywhere. Uh, and it also is available on uh, TensorFlow. So you load it, it and we're going to uh, divide it into uh, two groups. The first group will be uh, for train, uh, training purposes and the second group will be for testing purposes. Uh, as soon as we uh, divided the train and test uh, test set, we could uh, try to define our uh, neural network. There are, <clears throat> there are several uh, manipulations with the uh, data here. It's not very important at the moment. The, uh, in most cases, they are about the initial data preparation. For instance, um, uh, the maximum value in the MNIST data set is 155, but neural networks like uh, they uh, they like uh, to receive very small numbers on the uh, on the in in the uh, on the input. So I just uh, normalize uh, normalize it. We also doing some shuffle here, uh, generate generating some batches uh, and so on. So the uh, network in our case, uh, in order to uh, define a, a network, uh, we could just introduce a class uh, which uh, actually inherits from something called module. In this class, we could define the amount of uh, input features. So in, in, in our case, here will be uh, the amount of the uh, pixels and the output, uh, output features. 
And here uh, we could define the uh, matrix of weights, the uh, bias, and then uh, uh, the, what, what we would need to do is to define this um, magic method which will, which will actually uh, perform the calculation. As a matter of fact, the calculation is the uh, matrix, matrix multiplication of input vector x uh, uh, to uh, input vector uh, w, uh, w and uh, summon to it uh, our bias. Uh, this is our, uh, this is just only one one neuron, uh, and uh, if we if uh, you put here several inputs, uh, you're gonna have um, virtually uh, several neurons. Uh, now uh, we can combine. Uh, this is just only one layer, uh, one layer, and we could combine this uh, to into neural ne network class, and this uh, neural network class will encapsulate uh, two layers. The first one. Um, and the second one, and also output layer. So our uh, input uh, first layer will uh, input. Uh, it will um, take the uh, the vector and output the 128 uh, signals. Uh, the second layer will receive uh, this amount of uh, signals and put uh, uh, 256 features. And the last layer will be. Uh, as you can see, it it maps uh, this uh, dimension, uh, the uh, space of this um, uh, dimension to space of this dimension, uh, and you can probably uh, see here that in uh, after each layer, we either either reduce or um, increase the amount of uh, features. So in other words, we go we go from one, um, space with one dimension. Uh, to a uh, space with another dimensions from uh, the space uh, of n dimensions to a space with m dimensions. Uh, by this, we either combine, uh, reduce or introduce a new uh, features or remove uh, non-relevant non features. Uh, and here, <clears throat> uh, finally, uh, so in this uh, one layer, we just introduced the uh, we, we didn't introduce here any uh, activation, so we're gonna do it here. Uh, we will uh, put sigmoid uh, after each uh, layer, and uh, on the uh, end we will put a um, soft uh, soft max. Uh, I will explain it a bit later. What is actually soft max maps um, soft max. Um, so uh, what we need to do is to define a matrix uh, to a metric and uh, the um, a function, uh, the error function. So uh, we're gonna uh, use here cross entropy and accuracy. And now uh, what we need to do is to uh, train our uh, neural network. Uh, to train, as like as like already said, it means that we would need to adjust the the weights. Fortunately, uh, TensorFlow introduces a lot of, um, el actually a lot of um, very convenient uh, tools in order to perform trains. For instance, here, uh, we don't need to uh, calculate gradient by, by hand because we would need, we just need to um, use this uh, context uh, manager and uh, use gradient of uh, use its, its gradient. So we, 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 all we need to do is to put here our loss function, which, uh, which, I, which we need to um, minimize, which our, in our case is cross entropy and put the uh, training variables. Uh, training variables in our case, uh, these are um, uh, all variables from, uh, from layers. Uh, so it means that uh, they are all weights and all biases. Uh, and okay, so now we would need to uh, to run the uh, iteration process, which actually uh, does the, uh, the the training, and see what will happen. So I will run the uh, the, the this example, uh, but before I, before doing it, um, if you want to uh, to repeat this experiment, don't forget to change the runtime environment to GPU in order to use uh, graphical processing unit resources uh, while they're training the, uh, the network. Uh, let me run the, all the cells. 
and see how the accuracy and the loss uh, changes. So uh, I believe it's, yeah, it's been initialized and then let me wait a bit. Yeah, uh, let's wait a minute, wait a minute. Come on. Yeah, okay, so at uh, first step we're gonna have we will have uh, almost 65% uh, accuracy and you can as you can see with each epoch uh, the current uh, accuracy uh, grows it does mean that it will be growing all the time sometimes you can as you can see here you have 83% of accuracy here 82 here 80 almost 88 and so on so after certain iterations, uh, if my memory doesn't fail me, fail me we're gonna receive 94% of accuracy uh, as, far, uh, as far as I remember. Um, while this being trained, uh, trained uh, I will say that it is uh, important to uh, test your neural network and to test it in, the, in such a data that um, uh, this neural network haven't seen yet. In other words, uh, this is the reason why we uh, we have taken them uh, our uh, data set and separate and divide it into into two, two parts. The first part uh, is for training purposes, and the second part is for uh, testing purposes. So. Uh, these uh, items, uh, our network, our neural, neural network, uh, uh, it hasn't seen these these items uh, while during during the training process. So we could use this data in order to test how our uh, neural network performs, if it actually works, if it is capable to understand what. Um, if it's if it's if it has if it has learned uh, the numbers. Uh, just only based on this um, uh, training data. In our case, uh, we performed accuracy of 94% on the training data, a data set. And so uh, if, you, if you see on the uh, history of the uh, loss and accuracy, you're gonna see that uh, on each iteration, the loss decays and accuracy grows. So the more iterations uh, we performed, the more accuracy and the less loss we achieved. Uh, so what's, uh, what's, uh, what left is to understand uh, how our neural network performs on the test and data set. And uh, by, by checking the, uh, the summary error of um, uh, neural network based <clears throat> on the training data set, we can see that we achieved uh, accuracy of 90%, not very, uh, not good, uh, but not bad as well. So 90%, it's a very good start uh, for such simple uh, simple example. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we are doing kind of hello world, but in terms of neural networks, which is kind of kind of okay, 90%. Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, obviously you, you have a lot of uh, things to, for maneuvering, but in any case, it's uh, it's good result for start. Uh, finally, uh, we could try to perform our neural network. We could uh, take the created uh, neural network and uh, put uh, some test images to it and see what it actually predicts. And if you can see, uh, uh, there is a random batch of the uh, numbers from the uh, test images and it performs uh, well. So it understands that seven is seven, the two is uh, actually, it's uh, this is a mistake. As you can see, we have only 90% of the accuracy, the, uh, in the, which is why this uh, two uh, hasn't been classified um, properly. Uh, however, this is one, uh, this is zero, this is four, and this is again one, four, and this is um, nine. And this is, to be honest, I don't know what it actually is. For me, it's, I don't know if you know what it, what it is, like right, to the, uh, right on the comments, but uh, according to the neural network, it's, it is four. Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure what it is, what it is actually, uh, and this is nine. So as you can see, more or less, it performs uh, well for like well uh, for 
such simple neural networks. Uh, obviously, we, uh, we could try to uh, make much more sophisticated network. And uh, if we use here not uh, uh, perceptron, but uh, convolutional neural network, we uh, will be able to achieve much, much better results. But in any case, uh, MONIST data set is kind of benchmark uh, and, um, uh, and it's kind of hello, hello world for neural networks. Uh, I see comments, uh, it's five, uh, five. Um, uh, yeah, could be, yeah, 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 I think it could be, but yeah, very, very poorly little written uh, five, um, yeah. Not any any case <laughs> in any in any ways uh, the network it was it was quite close to the <laughs> to the answer but um, but yeah sometimes it's uh, difficult to understand even for human what what it's actually written here so uh, on this example we introduced a very uh, simple neural network and uh, uh, with the uh, help of TensorFlow, uh, we have uh, trained it. Uh, obviously, there are uh, much more interesting stuff uh, in Keras, for instance, and I believe um, during the next talk, I will introduce uh, uh, much, since this is a gentle introduction to the neural networks, uh, next will be a much more sophisticated, intro, not an introduction, but a continuation of this, uh, of this talk. And there we will uh, talk about um, convolutional neural networks. On the one hand with uh, Keras, is, it is very easy to define your, uh, your convolutional network. Uh, and on the other hand, it's very, uh, it, it is much more sophisticated in such a way that it um, uh, has much bigger potential of uh, pattern recognition of the uh, on images. Since it takes into account the uh, space um, specific uh, features, uh, it uh, pr produces much much higher uh, accuracy uh, as opposed to uh, classical perceptron. Uh, even, even though the perceptron, uh, however, perceptron is um, is a part of the uh, convolutional network. Though, um, what else? What else? What else? I wanted to say. Uh, perceptron. Yeah, perceptron is a part of the convolutional um, network. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's uh, it. So just to summar summarize the, the, what uh, has al already been said. So uh, the first thing is that neural network is a kind of math mathematical abstraction, which actually models the, uh, the real world, the, the, re the real brain cell. So, uh, uh, by, by introducing, uh, introducing some such uh, mathematical concept, we are capable to um, uh, solve uh, complex problems, like for instance, classification or regression. And uh, it is very important to uh, uh, find a proper architecture of uh, your neural network. By architecture, I mean amount of uh, uh, layers of uh, neurons activ and activation functions and the uh, weights. And in order to introduce weights, you need to train your neural network. Uh, there are plenty of, uh, you know, um, uh, problems uh, which may uh, appear while uh, training the neural network, uh, like gradient vanish and uh, much, 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 much more others. Uh, but in any case, uh, what we need to understand is that um, uh, introduce training the model. It means that we would need to adjust uh, accordingly the uh, the weights. Uh, so the architecture is uh, of the neural network matters also because uh, complex neural network it does mean that it's uh, uh, the the more complex network you introduce the more uh, problems you you will be uh, able to uh, to solve with, with uh, high accuracy it does mean this. Uh, however, the architecture is really matters. So it is a, a kind of art to, uh, to balance between the amount of the uh, neurons and, and, and layers in order to achieve uh, you know, uh, the result you, you expect actually. Yeah, and uh, that will be it uh, for, for today's part of the, uh, of the talk. Um, do you have any questions if you have any, so please do 
to ask, uh, I will try, I'll do my best in order to properly answer them. 